Good morning YouTube, welcome to another video and in today's video I want to talk about hot throw how to get better hot throw out of your candle but before we get into that we're just going to look at a bit of scenery and a few bits of my dog walk I wanted to get out nice and early today because it's like minus 3 and I thought I could get a few nice stills and photos so you're going to have to bear with me and then we'll talk about how to get a better hot throw out of your candle Oh. The first step to getting a good hot throw from your candle is adding fragrance oil at the right temperature. This is really important, something not to be skipped over. So, Recently I've been playing around with this. I've been trying lots of different methods, different temperatures, different variables, and I've sort of settled on probably what the industry standard is, adding your fragrance oil at 85 degrees. And once I've done that, I stir it for a couple of minutes like a nice cup of tea. This has proven the best result so far. Whereas before I was playing around a little bit, adding oils at different temperatures, slightly lower, um, just to see what would happen. I was also worried I'd lose like fragrance load and scent if I added the oil too hot but there's flash points with fragrance oils which represents when the oil could combust when it's um, sort of with an open flame not when the oil evaporates so at 85 degrees we're generally pretty close or way below the flash points so we shouldn't worry about losing any scent which was my biggest concern in the beginning because I was trying to add scents at sort of 60 degrees and such and so forth but when the wax is 85 degrees the oil and the wax is sort of at its hottest and it's most open as sort of a molecule um, so it'll all combine nicely and then set together when getting your wax at 85 degrees pouring your fragrance oils at 85 degrees and then giving it a good mix for two minutes that has worked best for me recently and has given me the best candles with the best scent throw like i said before at 85 degrees the wax is fully melted and that will absorb as much of the fragrance oil as possible as it cools down it'll all be sort of um, intermingled better. Next up, using the right amount of fragrance oil for your wax. Every type of wax has a different fragrance load, some 8%, some 10%, some up to 12%, but using the maximum amount of fragrance for a candle wax might not necessarily give you the best candle, so is it worth maxing out your candles? You can run into problems when you add too much fragrance to a wax, which is what I've done before in the past, as I always think more is better, which isn't necessarily true. You can get sort of um, oil pooling at the top, and you can get little pockets of oil that maybe not don't set throughout the sort of candle as you make it which can lead to safety issues if you get like a little pool of oil that sort of ignites um, and there's varying other issues you get sweaty candles you get all sorts you get frosting if you put too much oil in there so it can lead to a varying degree of things we don't want as a candle maker so the point i'm trying to make adding more fragrance oil doesn't necessarily lead to a better stronger smelling candle which is quite hard to get your head around especially it took me a while anyway as I said previously, I always think more is better, but in this case, not so. With anything candle related, it is trial and error trying to get the best hot throw and to try and make the best candle. So at the moment, I'm using eight to 9% fragrance load in all of my candles, mostly about 8%, and that has given me the best results so far. A poor wick equals a poor candle. So a poor wick will give us bad scent throw, we'll get uneven burning, we'll get tunneling, we might get some soot and smoke. These are the things we want to avoid. So how do we go about choosing the right wick? And there's only one way to do that. Finding the perfect wick for your candle just takes testing. But what you want to look for, you want to get a melt pool after about three to four hours. That's right to the edges of the candle. We want a flame which is between half an inch to an inch tall, no more than that. We don't really want much flickering. We want a nice sort of steady, even flame um, for safety issues as well. And we don't really want any soot or smoke because that can contribute to a sort of bad smell for your candle and you get sort of all the certain smoke outside the glass which doesn't look very nice so these are the things we want to look for when we're making a candle and the things we want to get from a wick now choosing a wick too small is going to lead to lots of things which we're not looking for so you'll get tunneling you'll get bed scent choosing a wick too small will lead to a lot of negative effects we'll get tunneling you won't get very good scent throw because it's tunneling so much everything's so, so, so um, centered and it's just not going to work very well. Choosing a wick too big is going to lead to a lot of safety issues. You're going to get loads of smoke, you're going to get loads of soot, it's going to burn too quickly. So you want to get something right in the middle that you get a nice even burn melt pool. 
you get a nice melt pool with and all of the pros that we've mentioned already. So wicking can be difficult, but you wanna make sure you get this right. If you don't get a good melt pool with your candle, the fragrance all isn't gonna evaporate and you're not gonna get a very good scent through. So that's the key. You wanna get a good melt pool with a nice flame about half an inch to an inch tall, which is gonna help evaporate the fragrance oil for your candle. That's what we're looking for. Cure time is the next thing that can lead to a good scent throw. Typically for me, I only really do sort of three or four days cure time. I don't see much point in doing it any longer. I can't tell a massive difference between um, leaving it for a couple of weeks and doing it for three or four days. Supposedly all the sort of wax molecules and fragrance oil sort of set and they all get solidified and that creates a stronger melt pool. I don't necessarily believe that, but I could be wrong. So I think curing is necessary, but only for like three or four days. You don't want to burn your candle sort of the day or two after you've made it. You want to give it a bit of time to set. So I would cure candles, but just not as long as everyone else. Some people cure them for two weeks, which sounds mental. Well, maybe not so mental, whatever works for you. It's all subjective. If you think a two week cure time is what is giving you the best candles, then go for it. Some other things that help me create really good candles with a mega centro is the additive of coconut wax. So you can get coconut soy blends, which are really good, but you can just try adding a little bit of coconut wax to your mix and just seeing how it works out. There's something with the coconut wax that just has really good scent for it. So what I use at the moment is SCX coconut soy wax from Candle Shack, but you can get C6 and there's a few other blends around. So I would recommend trying them. The blend of soy and coconut wax seems to give me the best results, so worth a go. Hopefully some of these tips you found useful. It would have certainly helped me in the beginning to get my head around a lot of stuff, as I did struggle getting some of the concepts. Like I mentioned before, I always thought more is better, so adding more fragrance would make a better candle, but as I've experienced, that doesn't always work like that. But like I said, if you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Thank you.